Welcome to In The Loop Podcast, a podcast that is inspired by the breakaway roping lifestyle. I'm your host, Jordan Joe, professional rodeo athlete, NFR qualifier, and business owner. My goal is to promote the sport of breakaway roping, alongside with celebrating and highlighting elite competitors in and out of the arena. This podcast shares the raw and the real of breakaway roping, bringing you behind the scenes stories from competitors, producers, leaders, and the trailblazers, all sharing stories of the Western culture and the lifestyle that they live daily. Join me to talk about breakaway roping, the history, the present, and the future of our sport. If you want to be in the loop, you're in the right place. Thank you for joining us. Take a listen. Okay, guys, so today we are here with H&K Productions, two of my fellow breakaway ropers, Harley Lynn and Carson Stevens. Thanks for coming to the show today, guys. Yeah, thank you for having us. So we have some pretty exciting news coming up. Y'all are doing your sixth annual H&K Productions. Uh, for those of you who don't know, they are really, really cool productions. Um, they are. They have been several different places over the past six years. Um, but this year we are gonna have one in Bonham, Texas on May 21st. And so sitting here visiting with Harley and Carson a little bit about that, we're gearing up for this event, getting excited. And y'all, I will have to say this is a little bit partial to me because they give one of the one of the coolest prizes that um that they give at a breakaway roping. They actually give a trophy. Yeah, they do. And I have won this trophy, which it's in my house. I was telling them earlier, I still dust it off. So uh, girls, what is it like just to to be a group of women, elite women, empowering each other, putting on these productions? Talk me through that a little bit. Well, Carson and I, we were college roommates. And so we were decided, hey, let's put on some breakaway jackpots. So we did our first roping in 2018 and we've been doing them ever since. And it is just awesome to be able to put on ropings with your best friend. Not everyone gets to do that. And so it's nice to have each other's backs and you know, we're just trying to put on great ropings for regular ropers to come to. For sure. So Carson, tell me, what is it like working with your best friend? Like, have you guys ever wanted to pull each other's hair out or how does that work? I will say I can remember once or twice, but honestly, me and Harley have lived together on and off between college roommates. Um, she moved to Decatur and, um, we were roommates last year too. And, um, throughout it, throughout it all, we really don't fight. Um, you know, my mom likes to joke that she's like, I've never seen two roommates that can work together, be best friends, live together, do it all and still get what we get done, done and not try to kill each other. So, um, it's been fantastic actually. (laughs) Well, that makes it special. I mean, I tell people sometimes, you know, we don't look very good in orange, black and white, not my thing. So, yeah, that's really good. But so tell me, girls, you know, I think one of the coolest things that we've learned on this podcast about breakaway ropers is that you guys are behind the scenes. You you guys have jobs, you have lives, you have all these things going on. And so that's really what we love to highlight here. So Harley, tell me a little bit about you and, and what you do when you're not breakaway roping. When I'm not breakaway roping, I actually work for Aldi Corporation, the grocery store. I work for their corporate office and I'm a purchaser. So I buy their every perishable item for this, all the Texas and Oklahoma stores. So I buy meat, fish, eggs, bread, everything for a hundred stores in Texas and Oklahoma. And I love my job. I work two days in the office and three days at home. So it still gives me the capability to rodeo, rope, you know, go places. Um, it's, it's a really great job and I love it. So. Well, and I love that too. And one of the coolest things out there is you're so tied into the behind the scenes and even the agricultural part of it in our background. And, and, you know, I, I love that you'd pass you in in standing and you would never think that that's what you do. You know, I think that's so cool about, about cowgirls and breakaway ropers. So what's it like? Have you, has anything that you've learned from the rodeo arena transitioned over into your workplace and your job? That it's fast paced, you know, we're always doing something, always going, always changing. Uh, There's so much room for growth. I've learned in the produce and food industry, kind of like there's so much room for growth in the rodeo industry. And that's really nice to see it. And that's why I love it. It's 
it's always on the go, always moving. And I love staying busy. And so I know that rodeo and my job correlate a lot because of that. Well, I love it. And you know, one of the coolest things is I'm sitting here and watching this video. If y'all haven't go watch it on YouTube, it'll also be live there, but they're sitting in their offices. They look so professional, right? <laughs> I mean, hello. So Carson, tell me a little bit about what you do um, in, in the industry when you're not break wear open. Um, so my family, we own a couple of um, businesses. We deal in off di off-road diesels and then um, oil field equipment more so than the actual oil field. Um, so I work in the finance department and the accounting office. So I like to say that I do a little bit of everything because with a family business we do, we've got over a hundred employees now. So I manage every aspect of I'm HR, I am, you know, accounting. Sometimes I have to mop and sweep the floors. I do it all. Um, it is, it's exciting. It's a lot different than people think. They think, oh, you work for your family. You get to kind of do whatever you want. And it's not like that at all. It is almost more stressful because I never get to get away. <laughs> it's, yeah. When I go home, that's still our conversations at dinner. It's still, you know, what it is. But it does give me the leniency now that I'm kind of settled into this position to finally hopefully get to rodeo some more this summer and get to rope again. Well, and I want to go a little bit deeper there. You know, you and I were talking the other day. I saw you at, at Dirk Webb's jackpot in Ponder at the Cowboy Church. Mind, mind I add you that she kicked our butt and took names. I think you placed in both rounds, won the average. Um, and everybody's like, who's that girl? And I'm like, oh, I've been up with that girl for a long time. So tell me a little bit. You, you had to step away from roping a little bit and, and you had some things go on. So talk to me a little bit about that. And, and now you're finally getting back after it. Yeah, so I, about a year and a half ago, um, was at the dentist, nothing big, and he said, have you seen a facial surgeon before? And I said, no, I don't know, even know what you're talking about. And he was like, well, I think you need to go see one. So I had to go see specialists in Fort Worth. Um, honestly, I've been in and out of the specialist office for the last year and a half, um, and they told me that I have a facial deformality um, where my jaw inhibits my um, my throat, so I can't breathe. Most people have like a 15 or a 20 millimeter airway in their throat. I have a two and a half millimeter one. Um, oh, wow. my, also played basketball for my whole junior high and high school, so I've also broken my nose, so I have deviated septum. Um, so he was like, how have you noticed that you can't breathe? And I'm like, well, no, no, I haven't. Um, <laughs> so for the last year and a half, we were kind of prepping up and getting ready for a full facial reconstructive surgery that would put me out pretty much for two years plus whatever I had on before. Um, I was going to be wired shut for between three and four months. Um, really couldn't eat solid food for six months. Um, and thankfully we had some stuff. I say, thankfully, um, <laughs> we had some stuff kind of go wrong with the insurance and after prepping me and doing all this stuff, they were like, oh yeah, no, I think we're okay. Um, you'll be fine. So, <laughs> um, I got to just really step back and I took a lot of time and prayed about it and tried to figure out, okay, is this something that I really need to pursue? Um, and God just really laid it on my heart that this wasn't the time. Um, it's something that I'm going to have to go back and revisit eventually. Um, it is genetic. My aunts had the surgery, so I guess we probably should have known this was coming. Um, but it was just something that I didn't feel like right now was the time to really push back and fight that. Um, so for the last year and a half, I haven't really been roping. I've been seasoning a young horse, trying to get another one coming along and just wasn't really on my mind, um, to really like pursue rodeo again. And it's been exciting because this year I've really gotten, since they told me I wasn't going to have to have the surgery and we decided we were going to push it off. Um, I'm actually going to get to rodeo this summer. So that's exciting for the first, you know, first time in a couple of years, I'm really going to get to hit the road and feel like I maybe have some horses that I can actually win on. And so it's, it's exciting. 
Very exciting. And, you know, I mean, as I'm listening to your journey and, and you're going through that, like just the courage that you had to, to step back and be like, okay, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to go all in. This is what it looks like. And then, like you said, God had different plans to go on there, you know, and it's like, woohoo, for one time insurance didn't work, but you know, I mean, wow. Like the adversity that you have to go through there and just the, the heart wrenching gut feeling things, you know, I know that there's a lot of pe- things that people go through behind the scenes that we don't know about. And that's one thing about our rodeo family that I love is the friends that you make when you don't see them every now and then reach out to them because there's a reason that they're not roping or or rodeoing or what's going on, you know, and it's like, you know, you, you have to be aware of that because you don't know why they're not going or what's going on or anything like that. Like I would have never known had I not talked to you, what was going on there and just the trials that you're facing. And so, um, I'm very excited that your insurance didn't work. So that you get to come back in rodeo this summer. Uh, very exciting. There's it's it's pretty fun, pretty cool out there, lots of good things to see. Um, but I, you know, one of the neatest things about this whole journey and 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 why we're here today talking about the HK events and productions. Um, we have just recently in our rodeo family as well had a, a traumatic injury and accident happen with Quincy Kuklehan. And Quincy was in an accident. I am going to go, y'all, if you haven't already, uh, qkstrong.com is the place to go to keep up with this. But Quincy has been in in the rodeo world. If you don't know the Kuklahans, so they have one of the uh, biggest amateur rodeos in East Texas, Bonham, Texas. It is, like we were just talking, the biggest grand entry I think I've ever seen. Um, like at least takes an hour. Like, like if the rodeo starts at eight, like you pray not going to rope until 930. Um, you know, it, it, there's people from all over. Like one time I was at the Allsup's and somebody was literally riding their horse three miles down the road from the Allsup's to the grand entry. Like it's a big deal. Um, man, they, they've just been so involved in our sport. Quincy is a little bit older than us. I will say, because we're obviously younger and cooler than him. Um, but you know, he, uh, he has been involved from tie down roping to team roping. He has been one of the great athletes in and out of the arena. His dad, Marty is a producer has the cattle a lot of places you know the last time I saw Quincy he was at the Debbie Perry finals they had the cattle there and and I was talking to him about rope and 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 he just looked at me and smiled and he said you just got to do whatever you think you need to I'm like thanks for the help Quincy appreciate it um but he was in a traumatic accident and when you when you have that happen and you well you hear that happen uh, to any of your friends rodeo family man your heart just drops your perspective changes and you just want to do whatever you can do to help those people. And that's what I love about rodeo. There is no person you've met that isn't a family member that you're not going to reach out and you're going to help. So Quincy's mom and dad, Marty and Cindy Kuklahan have been so gracious as to allow a group of people to start a, I'm going to say an organization uh, called QK strong. And you can go to their website, qkstrong.com and kind of keep up with Quincy's journey. So I just want to read you the first blog entry that we have we have on that website talking a little bit about what happened. Because one of the biggest things is this was a traumatic injury, y'all, and they have got a long road ahead of them. But the one of the biggest things for the family is that we want to respect their privacy. We want to respect their Christians, and they are believing for healing, and we want to respect that as well. And so the biggest thing for me is, like, I just want to make sure we have the facts here. So I am reading this post off of the QK Strong website. And this is what it says. Quincy Kuklahan is the son of Cindy and Marty Kuklahan. He is 35 years old. See, I told you he was older than us. And resides in Bonham, Texas. Quincy is a friend to many and is known for his contagious smile, helpful heart, and talented roping ability. That being said, his favorite title is one that includes being Hainsley's dad. She is adorable, might I add you. Quincy was injured in a car accident Wednesday, March 29th, 2023. Through the grace of God, Quincy is alive, and as a result of this accident, he has suffered many injuries. These injuries include three broken vertebrae in his back, broken ribs, and currently, Quincy has no movement from his waist down. Notice the emphasis on currently, as Quincy's family serves a mighty God, and he is the ultimate healer. As many know, Quincy's family is not the kind to ask for help. They are more familiar with the giving side of life but their family is indeed in this need at this time. Quincy's family desires to get him extensive rehab to give him every opportunity to fully recover. 
the facilities and treatments that the Kukuhan, that the Kukuhan family, it's kind of a little tongue twister, are inquiring about are quite expensive. Although this might be the reality, this type of care and support is necessary for Quincy to have the opportunity to be completely restored physically. So many have reached out and expressed the desire to help Quincy get the treatment that he needs. This website, group, and feed has been created to serve this purpose. Any financial support would be greatly appreciated. Please continue to pray for God's healing hand on Quincy's life, as well as for peace and strength for the days to come as Quincy and his family take this journey together. Lastly, please be prayerful that the perfect treatments, rehab centers, and doctors become available for Quincy. Many blessings to everyone. So, wow. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, it's so much. One of the, the good things that has come out of this, though, is I think Quincy's, I know Quincy's spirits are, he's going to fight and he is fighting. He has moved to the rehab center. And you know what has been so surreal to me is there's a group of people that are the QK Strong group, we call ourselves. Um, there's, you know, I'm going to say 10 to 12 of us that have come together and they are just rallying around Quincy and and fighting for him. And, and to see that in the rodeo world, I, it's brought tears to my eyes so many times that all these people are willing to fight and do whatever we can financially, you know, emotionally, whatever it looks like and whatever you feel like you can give to help these people out. It's been amazing. So coming alongside of that, Harley and Carson have decided to have their annual HK productions, or one of them, at least. There might be a second one. We're just saying, not throwing on that out there, Carson. No pressure. Um, May 21st. And it is going to be a benefit to help all the proceeds are going to Quincy and his family to get him the rehab help that he needs. So, girls, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about your history with the Kukul Hands and about your roping that's coming up and, and really, like, why it's on your heart to be a part of this. So I, I didn't start roping until I was a, in eighth grade, probably. And Marty is who taught me how to rope, Marty Kuklahan. And he, he's taught me everything I know without him. I, I wouldn't be where I am. I go back and rope with him still. I mean, I was there two days ago roping. Um, he's helped me every time I struggled in high school, college. I mean, that he's done so much for me. And um, just rodeoing, I mean, he's taught me more things that their family has, and they are of the best people I know, you know, um, I, I always hear that stuff. I don't know why bad things happen to good people, because Marty and Cindy are truly, I, I can hands down say, of the best people I know. Um, and so uh, in 2018, Carson and I were like, let's start putting on breaking with jackpots. And then Marty was like, absolutely, I'll help. And we started having him there at his place. And I know Carson mentioned that Marty's kind of like our right hand. And so when we, we were obviously, she was like, well, yeah, absolutely. We want to put on a rope and for Quincy, but we were like, how do we do it without Marty? He's so busy right now. So <laughs> we were like, we don't know what to do without that guy. Yeah. But um, they are, they're great people and they've helped us so much. So we said, you know, it's a no brainer. We want to do something to give back to them. And Quincy is, he's so kind and he, he can be a jerk sometimes to me just because him and my brother are such good friends. And so he always messes with me, but just two weeks before the accident, Quincy and I talked on the phone for an hour and he's always willing to help out. Um, so he's, he's great. And we want to do this for him just to do what we can. And by doing it where we're doing it at their place, I'm just so excited to get the community involved and, um, we're going to put on a great big rope in. And I know that's what Quincy would love. And I talked to Marty and Cindy and they're very excited. Cindy was crying. She's, she's very blessed that we're doing this. So it's, it's been, it's good. It, we're very excited to do it. Yeah. So I'm pumped May 21st, 2023, 10,000 added. Wow. That's like, you know, I know when the, we had the three star, this has been probably, I'm going to say six or seven years ago. And it was the first rope and breakaway roping to ever add 10,000. And it was just like, we went crazy, you know, and now you guys are able to do that again and match that. So how cool is that to have that added money and all that support? Carson, talk a little bit about what it's been like um, talking with these sponsors. I mean, y'all just decided this literally within the last two weeks, we kind of threw all this together and I reached out to you and we're like, Hey, is there any way we can make this happen? So talk about how that's been and just the, re the response that you've received from these sponsors and donors. Well, honestly, after our first Zoom meeting, when we kind of set the goal of having that 10,000 added, we were, we'd gotten done and I called Harley and I said, 
you know, this may be a little harder than we think, right? And she goes, yeah, I was thinking that too. And I said, okay, well, we've got to get it going then. Um, and I'm telling you within two days, we had the, we had almost all of the 10,000 added. And, you know, within the next couple of days after that, we'd added all of it. And everybody's just so, especially in the rodeo world, Marty and Quincy have touched every single one of these people's lives in some way. Um, and so they were more than willing to step in and help us put on the best roping that we can put on um, to benefit Quincy, but also to kind of just show him that we're here to support him. And yes, this is one event, but we're here for the rest of his recovery and the rest of his life to step up and help wherever we can. So it was a big mountain to climb, but you know, everybody was more than willing to step up and help. And it was just, it was exciting to see how willing people were to step in and help more. Yeah, I agree. And just being on that QK strong group, you know, there is, I, I can't even list all the people cause I'm going to forget somebody, but there's somebody that is committed Kenzie to doing the food trucks and getting all that in order. There is um, somebody that is doing all the t-shirts y'all we have, they're going to have 2000 t-shirts ordered. Um, we'll have those on the website as well. We're going to sell those at the events. So y'all be sure if you can't be there, go and buy a t-shirt or support. Um, there is a huge construction company that is on board that he's a team roper, but he's helping us with the breakaway <laughs> open. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So we got that and we've got a church that's being a part of it. Um, we've got volunteers out the wazoo, you know, if you guys want to help, if you're in East Texas anywhere, um, man, I, I just project this to be a huge event. Like there's going to be, um, you know, I know Marty, one of our things, what we really wanted to do was have a church service there. It's going to be on a Sunday. And so, uh, Harley talked to Marty and kind of got that all settled in and, and they decided it's going to be after the first round of the breakaway roping, which we're projecting to get 200 girls. Y'all we're limiting it at 200. So, but 200 breakaway ropers, and then we're going to have a church service. Um, how cool is that to be able to do that in the middle of an event, um, we're going to have worship. We're going to have auctions. There has been a crew that is handling all of the auction items. There is like, I'm going to say 20 pages of auction items that have been donated. Um, they were going to have those online to buy as well as in-house live auction items sold at the event on the 21st. Oh my God. I mean, what am I missing? Like there's so many people that have come together. Like, yes, this is going to be a great break. We're opening event, but it's also going to be a great event for Quincy. And I love Carson, how you said, this isn't just a one-time thing. Like, yes, we're coming together in this group effort right now to get a big bulk of money raised for him. Um, he, he didn't have any insurance before this injury, you know, and, and he's looking at getting the best help and he's not going to settle for any less than he can. He's a fighter man. And, and he is going to do all he can. He is doing all that he can, him and his family. And so we want to give them the best support that we can. We're fighting out here. Um, but it's going to be a, it's, it's not a one-time thing. Like it's a commitment as, as a community to be involved with Quincy and his family on this process. And it doesn't stop here. No, it does not. And I just know that there's so many people that love the Kukla hands that I, I think we're going to have an amazing turnout for the day with the food trucks, the, the worship. I'm Marty said that if one person at that rope in can get something from that church service, and then he said, you know, Quincy's accident is terrible and we, he just hopes that one person can, you know, meet the Lord from coming to this rope and coming to hear about what happened to Quincy and you know, that, that would really mean a lot to them. So. Yeah. hundred percent. And so, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to share all these details with y'all here right now. We will also have this on our website, on all of our social media profiles. So go check it out. Make sure you get entered y'all QK strong benefit breakaway jackpot 10,000 added Sunday, May 21st. Uh, we're going to rope at 11 o'clock. Uh, so the books are going to open at nine, but if you want to get entered, they are only taking 200 entries. You can enter twice, which is really cool. Put me down twice, girls. Um, call and text in entries are going to be May 15th and 16th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So if y'all would like to get entered in this event, make sure you call and text in Har um, Harley and Carson. And y'all, 
these entries are going to go by fast. There's so many people that want to support Quincy. If you guys want to have a chance to rope with 10,000 added, put your name down because they're only taking 200 girls. It's going to be a huge event. Not only that, there's going to be so many auction items. I mean, I, I don't even know if I should enter twice or just go through the auction. I'm really not sure. I'm not sure yet. Um, we're going to have auction. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have worship. We're going to have t-shirt sales. We're going to have donation buckets going around. It is going to be a community event, y'all. And uh, I'm, I'm just so excited. You know what? And even if you're not roping, like come and and be a part of the event of the day, you know, get a piece of it. Um, if you can just come and help in any form or fashion, that would be great. You know, I just, I really want to see the support from this family because they've given back so much to the rodeo community. So I really just want to do our best to get back to them. And we want to thank all the sponsors and people that are helping us out for this, uh, for putting up the added money, uh, all the local people that are helping out as well, all the sponsors that are donating prizes to the rope in itself. And um, I guess I need to start practicing up for this $10,000 added jackpot because I haven't been roping very much. <laughs> well, I guess, and Carson, touch a little bit on all these sponsors. You know, one of the things we were talking to, uh, a couple of ladies, Hillary, Megan, and Jessica, um, Madeline, I'm, I'm going to miss somebody's name. I can't even name them all, but they've been working on t-shirts, sponsors, auction items, all things QK strong. Um, we have so many donors and sponsors. We, we don't, we need like three shirts. It's okay. so cool. So cool. And so we're just, we're going through there and listening. Um, but no, no amount that has been given has been overlooked. Quincy has seen all of them. Um, Cindy has seen, Marty has seen, you know, they're so thankful for the support. So talk a little bit about Carson on the business side of it, what it means to be a part of an organ, you know, an organization like this, that's giving back and it's making a difference in people's lives. So the thing that's made me so excited is in the business world, I deal every day with donations, people who are giving money or who want to give money. I mean, we do it. And then most of the time it's for tax write-offs, obviously. Um, but not one single person that we've had donate has even asked about it, even made any kind of, it's all been straight from their heart and it's all been straight from Quincy or straight for Quincy. Um, and that's just been really, sometimes for me, I get so caught up in that everyday, um, negativeness of the business world um and the what can you do for me if i do this for you what can you do for me if i donate this can you do this if i you know <clears throat> what am i going to get from it and not one of these sponsors has asked what am i going to get from it it's all been straight for quincy um and i think that's just his accident has really softened the hearts of everyone i mean i know it's got me it's got harley it's got everyone um so it's been, it's been such a positive experience from, for everyone, but we just can't say thanks enough for all the sponsors. Yeah. And they, it's been so just astronomical, the amount of people that have come to support, which is so exciting. But I will say as a roper, you know, I I've known Quincy since, you know, I was Shawnee was probably the first place I saw him. All of you young kids are probably like, Shawnee, that was a big deal back in the day. Shawnee was a cool thing. You know, but but just kind of that's where all the kids met up, you know, as a little Colorado girl meeting all the Texas people, you know, woohoo. But um, yeah, so that was probably one of the first places I met him. And and he just was an outstanding roper. And then as I moved down to Texas and, and became a part of that culture, got in the UPRAs, um, really got to know him pretty good. And and Marty, um, my husband, Raymond, has known Marty for a long time as well. And and Cindy and the Kugel hands. Um you know, I've been honored to win Bonham's Rodeo, which is a really hard rodeo to win. Mm -hmm. I've tried for a really long time. Um, and that's one of the buckles that I have and, and I wear a lot. But, you know, one thing I'll say, it really humbled my heart just hearing about this was, yes, I know Quincy and I know the family, probably not on a, a really deep personal level, but we know who they are. So I feel like they're rodeo family, right? And it just completely helped and changed my perspective. Because I think we, like you said, Carson, we get caught up in being competitors, whether it's in the rodeo arena, whether it's in business, anything we do, we have that competitive heart. But I love that it's, for me, it's turned that competitive heart and how much can we help raise for Quincy right here. So that's my goal. And I've taken it as a personal into it because I'm like, let's get after it, you know? Um, and so that's been something that's really cool. And, and I know how much Quincy loves to rope. 
And so just the fact, and there's so many more events going on, y'all. Like this is a breakaway open and these girls have worked so hard. The the team, the QK Strong team has worked so hard. Like, I just want to say thank you to all of those people, all the sponsors. Like you can't say thank you enough, right? But also just the fact that they're having team opens. They're, we even heard maybe they're going to have a bull riding event. Um, there's so many people in the rodeo world that have come together to have events to benefit Quincy and on this journey that he's taking. Um, and so I just think that that's really cool and and neat to see as a competitor and then somebody that's just trying to help help for the cause. I think it really speaks volumes about the Kuklahan family, how many people are stepping up and putting on events and doing things for them. It it really just shows how great of people they are. All right, girls. Well, I'm looking forward to it. May 21st is going to be here before we know it. Call in entries, y'all, are May 15th and 16th from 6 to 10. Put your name down. Don't miss this event. Um, you guys, all of this information will be in our show notes. It will be on our website. You can find everything that we've got. We'll have the QK Strong link on there. If you want to go and check out more of Quincy's story and keep updated on all the good things he's got going for him right now. And then also we will have anything else you need on social. You name it. We've got it on this show. So. Thank you guys so much for coming today. I am so excited to be in Bonham, Texas on May 21st for the HK Production 6th Annual Breakaway Open 10,000 added. Um, high five to you girls for having such a great production and coming together and, and doing this for the Kukla Hands. Um, we're very, very cool. Yeah, thank you for having us today and we're excited to see y'all in Bonham. <laughs> thank you for joining us on In The Loop Breakaway Open Podcast. I truly appreciate all of your loyal support. Don't forget to leave me a review, share this episode with a friend. And if you have any questions, I want to hear from you. Email me at jordan at thebreakawayropingpodcast.com. Go check us out, sign up for our newsletter, get our email alerts, text alerts, and all things breakaway roping. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you down the road.